Thank you. We're going to move on to uh, our regular meetings. Under the first item of unfinished old business, uh, C-2021-2044, continuation of edge order construction, I believe that has been withdrawn. It has. And uh, Z-2021-2045, also of Edgewater Construction, has also been withdrawn. Correct. And uh, Z-2021-2104 of R&D Land Development, LLC, requesting a special permit for LLC housing project, 52 one-bedroom units on property located at Tarbox Road playing field, now 10, block 14A, lot 47, already 60 zoning district. And this was continued? Yes. And uh, Z2021-2178, uh, San Fernando Properties, LLC, requesting a special permit for earth excavation at 1221 Norwich Road, assessors map 5, block 4, lots. 42A and 43. Uh, is the application of both property on property line and side line? Yes, it was. Yeah, I was have a waiver to consider for the groundwater monitoring. That's true. That would have to be considered and voted on prior to um, any approvals. Discussion on the waiver? Do we have the waiver? And the waiver is to uh, um, waive the requirement for groundwater monitoring. You have Anything specific language for that? Yeah, there was a formal letter submitted. I have another copy if you'd like to. Boundaries LLC regarding the waiver request for groundwater monitoring requirements section 12.32.4.16 application for special permit for earth excavation location 1221 Norwich Road and portion of 1253 Norwich Road applicant San Germano Properties LLC your commissioners in association with the above referenced application for special permit on behalf of our client, San Gimeno Properties, LLC, pursuant to section 12.32.8 of the Town and Plainfield Zoning Regulations, we respectfully request a waiver of the groundwater monitoring requirements contained in section 12.32.4.B.16 of the Town and Plainfield Zoning Regulations. Three exploratory test pits, holes rather, and transect the proposed excavation area were completed and expected by the undersigned on July 13, 2021. For evidence of seasonal high water, groundwater was observed at a minimum depth of 22 feet below existing grade. The existing grade of the majority of the proposed excavation area is at a consistent elevation of 168, and the lowest proposed grade within the excavation area, elevation of 150, producing a maximum cut of 18 feet, Likewise, a maximum cut of 18 feet leaves a minimum of 4 feet of native soil above the observed evidence of seasonal high groundwater. In our, in our opinion, that granting this waiver will not undermine the authority or the intent of the Plainfield Zoning Regulations and will not have an adverse effect on the health, welfare, or safety of the community. Since 
Sincerely, Damien A. Sorrento, AICP, CSS, Certified Planner and Soil Scientist, Founders, LLC. Existing travel route 
of the of 1221, so that property is access via that, that customer area that's established. Coming off of the milling area around the cold storage building, our access drive that comes up. The maximum grade of, of that driveway up is about 5% and 24 feet wide. It's, it's not steep enough that it requires <coughs> at, a bituminous concrete treatment. We're proposing to, to surface that with, with crushed asphalt millings, which is the same amount of uh, produces from recycled materials on site as part of this PED application. So coming off of there, the access drive goes up, up around the area that we just talked about, about the uh, excavation, and up to that flat area that's created by that by that, uh, that ledge cut up in the back. So we're proposing an 8,000 square foot building, an 80 by 100, again, very similar in structure and architecture to the ones that are already constructed on the site. Uh, the property to the north also has steel buildings on them, so it, it kind of fits nicely in here. Uh, we have a circulation drive around. We have parking area out front. The, the business that's going to occupy this is a tree service company. They primarily want areas so that they can store their, their trucks and equipment indoors. Uh, we had to submit a, a floor plan of the building, and it's really, it, it's a steel structure, so it's entirely open inside. 80 by 100 is entirely open inside. And the only thing that's partitioned inside is a 5 by 8 bathroom. Um, so it's completely open inside. We have some area outside. We designated some area here if you wanted to split firewood. Uh, a lot of times these tree contractors uh, have, a, have a, a little side thing with, with preparing firewood from the material that they remove from properties. So we designated an area there. The recommendation of staff is behind the building, down inside of a 17-foot you know, uh, ledge cut. So it won't have a negative impact on the residential properties on Topa Road. We have improvements for uh, handicap access here. We have an all weather surface there. We have a sidewalk to the one man door of the building, which is at the, the lower left corner there. I noted in the previous application how this is going to be excavated down and then backfilled with processed material to allow uh, for underground stormwater improvements, underground conduit for utilities, etc. In order to collect the water that comes off of these buildings, uh, presumably they have gutters the long dimensions that will have downspouts and they will discharge to the areas off of the circulation drive. You can see in the cross section they're kind of swales. So that these, these spot grades indicate a sloping of the land from the back to the front where the stormwater is collected in here, piped under the circulation drive and out into another series of swales, which goes into a, a stormwater quality basin, which is located here. Goes into the sediment four bay, any, any uh, fine particles that are, that are collected in the, in the areas under adjacent to the building, kind of settle out in here. Very similar to what's in front of KNH's building up front, has a sediment four bay, a weir, and then uh, the, the larger area for water quality basin then flows out uh, through an outlet spillway, and then we'll, we'll follow this vegetated swale all the way down to this location, and then flow over land down into that lower corner here. We have an on-site sewage disposal system. I mentioned we don't have sewer here. So we have an on-site sewage disposal system uh, for which late in the day we did receive approval from NDDH. I'm not sure if that came to you. Uh, I did not see it, but it's not necessary for this part of the process. I have. So you can get it. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. So we did uh, receive that, that letter dated today, I suppose, as well, uh, that the plan is approved with some minor, with some minor uh, conditions of approval. So we do have that. We have an on site uh, water supply well, which is shown in this location. We're currently working with, with Eversource to establish an easement to get the power from one of the poles on Route 12 all the way back here. Uh, we're, we're, I think we're getting there on that process finally. Uh, so one of the one of the questions, the first one that was outstanding about the consulting engineering review was the lighting plan. This is very far off the road. Uh, we're not proposing any lighting uh, along the access drive here. Although we have to provide parking adjacent to the building, this is not a place where customers come to the shop. 
Uh, this, the workers come here, leave their vehicles, get in their work trucks, and go to site. You don't, uh, you don't process or cut trees in a building. You do that on people's property. So the only lighting that we're proposing is adjacent to the building itself. These, these rectangles with the WP are wall packs. We're proposing he has a similar ones on this, on this building up front. Uh, the full cutoff, they're mounted about 15 feet high. There are 14 by 14 doors, two on the gable ends, and then three on this side that's adjacent to the circulation drive there. We did provide a specification in our response comment with the LSI uh, LED uh, full cutoff wall packs. I also added the sheet 707 uh, photometric plan. Trying to find a spot to put this on this plan was a little tough. So this year, uh, it's a, at scale 11 equals 40. I didn't want to clutter the, uh, the the primary site plan with it. But these concentric lines are our foot candles. 20, 20 is the output at the light, and it goes down to the last one is 0.1 at one tenth of a foot candle. Uh, none of this light escapes the parking area. Certainly, none of it escapes if they're mounted at 15 feet high. They don't escape with ledge cut, which is higher than that elevation next door. So we do have that photometric plan there. You can see those concentric lines. That light uh, is dying out to one tenth of a foot candle at the edge of the pavement. We're not proposing any lighting other than one wall pack uh, in the vicinity of the man door on the lower left side. We have uh, one on that corner. We have one on each gable end, and then three above the doors on the on the hundred foot dimension of the. Of the building to the north, on the north side. So none of that light uh, is escaping the immediate area of the of the building. We do. We added some lighting notes on the site plan sheet. We're around here to read those. They're right here above the legend, uh, the catalog specifications. I'm trying to turn my back to you. Uh, catalog specifications for the exterior wall pack lighting fixtures specified on this plan have been submitted with the application for site plan review and are included in the Commission's permanent file, LSI LED traditional wall pack, large cutoff, SFCL or equivalent. Number two, all site lighting shall be full cutoff style fixtures and incorporate features that minimize light trespass onto adjacent properties to the greatest extent practicable. No site feature or activity associated with this operation shall create glare or illumination which extends beyond the site's property lines and creates hazard or nuisance to a neighboring property or on the adjacent roadway. And number three, site lighting adjacent, uh, site lighting except that deemed necessary for security purposes shall be turned off when the facility is not in use. So we're, we've tried to minimize uh, the number of lights, uh, keep it to the the amount and illumination that's required for both safety and security, and, and leave it at that. Uh, at the top of the ledge cut, we said that we had a, a ledge cut here. We're leaving 50 feet of natural vegetation uh, around that ledge cut. We do have a little bit of overburden to deal with where, where there is some. Uh, in some areas, it's only 12 inches, and some others, it's, it's in excess of four feet. So we do have some earth grade at the top of that uh, in order to have a safe situation here. We're proposing to bring that, uh, bring that rock cut with a six-foot high chain link fence to prevent, you know, neighboring kids from going and jumping off, or falling off that that uh, that ledge cut. So we have details for that also on sheet six and seven of seven. So we have a building that has lighting, circulation drives, uh, parking, you know, parking. Calculation here. We have some of the compliance table on this sheet. Also, again, those cross sections indicating that really the only side, except from the front view from Route 12 and the approach, uh, only the roof of the building is even visible from an adjacent property. Uh, we have a gradually sloping access drive. We have stormwater management improvements. Uh, we have a new lot called 31 Mullins Road. We have all site utilities that are approved by NDH. And Majority of the details on sheet six and seven, seven and seven have to deal with the particulars of that site plan, erosion of sedimentation controls, uh, stormwater management improvements. Uh, one of the comments that was given to us by CHA was, what's, what's going on with the long-term maintenance of that of that water quality basin? So our PE added uh, that, that final 
final block of notes there are some of our quality of energy operations and maintenance, which includes uh, inspection by the property owner and submission of a report annually to the town that, that it's, everything is functioning as it should. Another one of the comments related to an additional uh, erosion control measure, which was incorporated into the bottom of the basin there. Inside, it's very hard to see and it's busy, but uh, it's called out in this location here. Proposed it's provide 200. Sorry. There, provide and maintain the continuous sediment fence barrier at the bottom of the slope within the basin. So, in, in the time between when the grading is done and vegetation is established on the side slopes of that basin. There's a uh, concentric reef both in the sediment forebay and in the water quality basin of uh, sediment fence to stop those fines from getting down into the bottom of the building. Um, so we did have that at the request of the consultant as well. So again, sheet five is a, is a sanitary design plan. Uh, sheet six and seven are notes and uh, notes and details for the two uh, construction of the site. That's our presentation for the for the site plan portion of this uh, plan set. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Joe, if you have anything to add. Thank you. Um, any comments from staff? Uh, the only comment that I had was, uh, well, I actually had two comments. One was the, uh, the lighting plan, which has been provided, and it does not appear as if any lighting will be leaving the site. Uh, the other comment was, uh, I think privacy slats on the southern side of the fence would be beneficial to the neighbors just for a little added screening um, in the area of the building. What is that line? What's that? The sub that park area with the slats. Um, Where it plus the residential? Yes. So they're only going to be see, they're only going to be able to see about two feet of the rooftop. Um, if they're, you know, low to the ground, but from the second floor windows, they might be able to see a little more. Um, the elevation drops off into there. The, 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 only, the yeah. only building that's even visible from this property is their garage, which is way at the back of their property. Okay. Their house is way down the middle. I mean, if, if you're talking about that section of the chain link fence right there. Yeah. The privacy slots, for that that a natural little buffer for noise? I don't think so. Um, with those elevations, I'm pretty sure any noise will go directly up and not out. Now, even existing grade, the property is still eight feet lower than existing grade. So now you're on a slope like that to the neighborhood, and now the building is down here, and then the houses are you know, down towards, towards the over We really don't expect that. Um, but you have 50 feet of that. As well as the property is on the neighbor's property. Any comments? Uh, just the comments that we had discussed previously. I do have some suggested conditions of approval. Um, so, engineering, engineering fees to be paid prior to the zoning permit. <coughs> being issued or within 30 days of billing, and uh, Mylar is filed prior to receiving his only permit. Well, what was the second condition I didn't quite hear that? Mylar's uh, no, before that. Uh, engineering fees paid um, yeah. prior to receiving his only permit or 30 days from um, submission of billing. I'm, I'm just curious, would the applicant be opposed to putting those privacy slats on that southern edge of the residential? Am I opposed to it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if it's, if, it's a, um, if, if you can see it, you'd understand it's not really needed. I mean, if it's a, between it happening and not happening, then I'll put privacy slats on there. Yeah, it does. He's, he's going to be the new owner of it. If we're going to do a business, a plane deal. So, any cases, taxes on time, that's good. Yeah, but that, there I'll, is. I'll, I'll start multiple people with. No, I get it. Sean, 
there is about 200 feet before you hit the first house and a decent amount of vegetation there. Yeah. So we have 50 feet of natural vegetation on our property that we're not even touching, even though and the and the lot is already building 17 feet below that. When the privacy spots give the malicious security too. Uh, just something cool. Yeah, it's just the plastic that go yeah. in the Just hard for people to see what's going on down in there. Um, I, I have no concept of cost. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how much you can't imagine it being a whole lot. But it's like it's 100 it's, feet. You're talking about just within the from gable end to gable end of the building. It's 100 feet, not much. I mean, if, if, they, if, you, if, it, if it actually, I was thinking that whole property line. Well, that's a lot of stuff. Four, 400. Yeah, I was thinking pretty much everything from where the wood stockpile is all the way down to the parking lot. I don't, I don't know how much that would impact the price of it. I, if you're asking me if I think it's needed, no, I don't think it's needed. If you were to see the, see the physically put eyes on it, you would look at it and be like, yeah, it's. Well, I, I see the cuts of it. It's pretty deep in the hole in the ground. So. Yeah. And there's quite a bit of vegetation between that and the, and the houses that are okay. like 200 plus feet away. I'm not trying to, but, uh, yeah, there's a mature, there's a lot of mature vegetation. Like, yeah. If you were to see it, you would be up. The, the lower canopy vegetation will come up once it gets light, too. Once that center portion is opened up, you will get a lot more uh, natural vegetation in the other story. Can you point out approximately where that? Nearest dwelling was on the plan. I don't think the offer would have a plan to show it. They're not, by my recollection, they're not far off, maybe 707 off Tope Road. Yeah, I thought it's kind of the same, the same as the location back here. I believe it's Stringer's garage is back here. The remainder of the houses are. Probably at that 150 line or further away from the property down here, at least 150 feet away from that property line. Again, that's by my recollection. I think they're they're closer to Toba Road than they are to the back, which would mean that they were that they were you know not halfway through the lot back, and that's that dash line up on the butter half is 150 feet from the boundary. So that's he's got 50 feet of vegetation on his side. Plus 150 feet, so it's nearly 200 feet down the hill. And and this building's in a home. Okay. Yeah. Now um, you, you just have to use some of those things over there. Right? Yeah. No, I don't think it's that big of a concern. Okay. So, like I said, the only thing you can really see is about two feet of the roof. So, I don't, I don't see it as a concern. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve with the conditions that Ryan stated. You want to read the conditions off again? Make sure we're on record. Sure. Engineering fees to be paid prior to zoning permit being issued or within 30 days of billing. And mylars to be filed prior to receiving the zoning permit. I second you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your time. Okay. On to C 2021 2181. Sandy Manor Properties LLC. And Joseph Sandy Mata. Previously approved PDD plan on property located. 1221 Norwich Road and 1221 Norwich Road, Sussex Mount 5, Block 4, Box 32, and 32. Hello again, leaving in Sorrentino, certified planner and soil scientist from Boundaries LLC. I just want to repeat these, these contain the revision for the 1231. And uh, I wanted to make sure you want any additional copies of it. You want to? Uh, yeah. Okay.
So this is kind of the, the third piece of the puzzle. We were here as stated for our plan development district designation. We are not at this time proposing to incorporate the Walmsley portion, that back portion of 1253, into the plan development district. But uh, we do have an obligation, in my opinion, to update the PDD site plan. Uh, we submitted uh, a plan showing the uses that were demonstrated in order to establish that plan development district. Uh, so we have added now to that uh, the grading and the proposed improvements for the site plan at what will be 1231. The primary revision to this plan between what I handed in originally with the application and the revision that's dated today is that address change to 1231. Um, so the summary of, of land uses for the PDD, uh, we've updated that table when we were here for approval of the PDD, those things at the bottom portion that weren't, weren't checked at that time, we presented those uses, which included the on-site processing of the recycled materials, the, the, the truck and freight terminal for the dumpster division, uh, et cetera. We had areas designated on the property for stockpiling and processing and dumpster locations, et cetera. Uh, so now 1241 um, is gone, 1221 is that the area of 1241 is incorporated into 1221, and now we've added sheet number two of the PED site plan, which is essentially just grabbing all of the stuff from the site plan that was just approved by the board and adding it to this to this plan. We didn't show the rear of the property at that time. We kind of, kind of truncated it, but now we are incorporating the use for a contractor's business on 1231 Norwich Road. General note on sheet two just states that we submitted a separate site plan application uh, because it was a permitted use. Uh, the, uh, if the PDD allows it, it allows it to see one district, uh, the contractor's use is allowed. So uh, I, these, these weren't stamped and sealed because if, if there were any uh, major modifications to the site plan portion of it, which would be shown on sheet two, uh, we would have incorporated that, but uh, since there, there really aren't. This plan will be reissued. A new mylar will be filed in the land records, which will supersede uh, the PPD site plan that was approved just a few months ago. And we now have um, we now have a plan that, that represents what is there currently. Uh, when the excavation is done, uh, and Joe wants to build another building or a set of buildings or establish another use on the Wamsley piece, uh, we will. If it works for the R60 district, it can work. Uh, if he wants to change the zone to a C1 or incorporate that portion of the property into the PDE district uh, that he has at 1221 and 1231, then we'll redo this plan again and present it to you. Again, we got, it's got, it, this is kind of a, a, a work in progress. As, as things get approved and he develops his property, this PDE designation plan needs to, needs to incorporate those things and has to be Forward. So it's really just an administrative process. The site plans uh, have been approved. So uh, this is just keeping it, keeping the PDD plan current. Any comments from Scott? No, we've already addressed every, all the comments in the last two applications. Thank you. But the other thing, this, this, this corner of the plan here is kind of like a running tally of the uses that are, that are permitted on the property in case there's any question for staff, future staff. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
of the uh, 1421 regular public hearing meeting. that was on the table tonight, a couple of articles that I Xeroxed from this month's edition of Planning Magazine, which were pretty timely topics, one on uh, ADUs and the other on last mile warehouses. Uh, report from Zion Enforcement Officer. Well, we, just, we skipped other, um, but I was going to state under other, since we only have three members here tonight, and it's 8.30. Why don't we push off discussion of accessory dwelling units until next month? Okay. Any motion to table that? Make a motion. I'll make a motion to table the discussion on accessory dwelling units. That's it. All right. All right. Uh, one other thing that I just wanted to state before my report is that we had a request from the first selectman to add to the lighting regulations for sport lighting and recreational lighting. So that is contained um, in my staff report toward the rear. So if we want to review that for the next month. Okay. All right. Okay, 14 Canterbury Road, Mitchell Bolio. Um, junk vehicles and equipment on property. He has been making a lot of progress over there. Since the last meeting, he removed two more dumpsters of scrap metal and the excavator and the backhoe are both running now and should be removed to the property shortly. Uh, 3244 North Road, Sweet LLC, the old Jewish City Savings. We are still in court over that. We were supposed to have a pre-trial hearing on uh, October 7th. That was canceled at the last minute and will be rescheduled. 211 Cape Down and Road, Mackin, uh, construction equipment. September 20th, we had a hearing. The judge ordered briefs to be filed in three weeks, and another hearing will be scheduled after that time. 13 Simmons Ave, Frisco, Motor Vehicle Junkyard. Um, very little progress has been made, and that is going to the, uh, to the attorneys for court action. Zero Norwich Road, and Root Road, and Fields. Um, this was the earth excavation. We are still waiting on, on plans for that. There is no activity. 23 Babcock Ave. Um, this was the driveway at the top of the hill over here. Um, they did construct the driveway and close the unpermitted curb cut. And they are now in compliance and that violation is closed. 40 Tower Rocks Road. Philip Payne, PHH, PHH Mortgage Corporation for Junkyard. Um, September 13th, the town attorney sent out a demand letter to, um, to the bank, which is PHH Mortgage. And that was received. They did a little bit of work over there, but not much. So they will be receiving a cease and desist. And uh, they'll go there. 371 Lathrop Road, basement apartment without permits. This was a new complaint that came in. Um, a tenant put in a complaint about an apartment in a basement. So we went out, made an inspection, uh, found there was an apartment, and the property owners are relocating the individual who is residing there, and uh, they will be removing the bedroom, and uh, hopefully they'll be in compliance in the next couple of months. That's it. I have a question on the North Road, Ruby Road, Kingsfield. At what point do we tell them to have to return that property back to the way it was, or can we not do that? Because obviously this has been dragging on for a while now. We can do that. I know they have contracted 
Um, they're just finalizing the plans. Okay, so they are currently actually working on it? Yes. Okay. The only update I have uh, to my written report is the town meeting on October 7th, 7th um, approved the expenditure of the grant funds for the Interroyal Assessment Grant, the Brownfield Assessment Grant. Other than that, I have no other updates. It is. All right, then uh, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion for sure. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.